John, what's going on with these nuclear batteries that last 50 years without being charged? An another another Chinese uh, uh, article or, or based from a Chinese startup called Betavolt, which they've unveiled a new type of battery called a atomic energy battery. Um, it supposedly generates power from radioactive isotopes for over 50 years without needing charging or maintenance. Um, so <coughs> apparently, excuse me, the battery utilizes 63 nuclear isotopes sealed in a coin-sized module that converts the energy released from their decay into electricity via a process that was first explored in the Soviet Union and the U.S. Um, and so apparently, and I say apparently because this is this one I'm, I'm really skept skeptical of. Um, Betavolt claims that its battery produces 100 microwatts, which isn't that much, of power at 3 volts initially. But they're aiming to produce one watt by 2025 and multiple batteries combined together in series just like we learned in back in school could be used together for a higher output again there's tons of potential applications if phones would be great drones that could fly indefinitely medical devices sensors space technology um so and and the reason why space technology is because apparently it's stable in harsh environments so they say that they're safe as the radioactive material is sealed and does not emit radiation, but there is a lot of shielding around it. And if they do scale it up, they're going to have to, um, uh, as they scale it up, they're going to need more shielding. Um, so the after the decay, the isotope becomes a stable copper, apparently. So uh, what they're saying is likely isotopes include, and you'll like this, tritium, hydrogen-3 which is commonly used in neutron generators or radioactive luminous paint due to its low energy and safe uh, emissions. But again, proper containment is key. So um, again, this is one where I'm skeptical of it. It's based on my understanding of, and again, I'm not a nuclear physicist or, or engineer or anything like that, but um, there, there is potential here, maybe. <laughs> there is potential here, baby. I like your confidence. <laughs> I, it's interesting. You know, we were talking about, we just did an episode on six gigahertz, terahertz waves and mm -hmm. how that could affect us um, and how we're moving them closer and up in the amperage and all that stuff. What is going on with radioactivity coming out of this? It's a pretty small looking battery we're seeing. We see a couple different sizes that we're coming up in the video we were looking at is it you know enough to power our cell phones no. now and like how many would we need and what's the radiation of these things like i don't know we are you mentioned it and i'm just do we really want to be walking around with these radioactive devices in our pockets but at the same time i'm asking you about backyard nukes right so <laughs> exactly like i i think that this would be a, a great technology for to replace like those tesla battery balls right um because then it's not right up against your skin in your pocket um there's a lot you're a lot more distant from it uh th there's different things like that but or even in cars um but i'm not sure if it uh, obviously it definitely needs to scale in order to get to the power needed for cars but um um i <sighs> To be honest, I don't even know what the what the what the draw from a cell phone is. I have to look that up. Um, but um, again, um, I the the thing is is okay. Sure, um, uh, it it could last for for fifty years. And my biggest concern is the what happens like like if you go. Obviously, because because the operating temperature range essentially they claim from minus sixty Celsius to one hundred twenty Celsius, so it could um, survive a, a plane trip if if you go up and because they're they're looking to use this in space too. But but uh, what happens if we get into like the battery gate with Samsung? This time it's not just a regular battery that's that's not radioactive. We have a radioactive battery. So um, yeah. Power consumption um, for a phone is is when it's on standby is about 0.5 to 1 watts. When it's the screen's on, it's about 1 to 2 watts or 2 to 3 watts when you have max brightness and you're doing tasks like video games and stuff like that. Same with browsing and scrolling. Um, so you're talking max maybe 5 watts of, of use at a time. So 
Uh, and they're talking about their goal by 2025 is to get it to one watt. Yeah, and that's a 15 by 15 by 5 cubic millimeters. As If you can take a look here, yeah. um, it's pretty small. Yeah. You put... You put like ten of those, you've got the same size of a of a regular battery, uh, cell phone battery. I don't yeah, know I, I don't know how big the batteries are in the cell phones anymore because they squish them and make them and they pour them and they do all this different stuff and fill in all the yeah. gaps with batteries. So it's hard. But um, yeah, you would figure you'd, they'd be, you know, obviously you wouldn't want to do that with this technology. You, it'd need to be um, yeah. shielded better. But yeah, it doesn't sound like it's too far away, especially, you know, if one is to generate one watt, you get three of them in there from a generating point of view. Um, combination of this and regular batteries, you have these just charging your batteries on the go. So yeah. your regular lithium ion or some of the sulfur uh, ones that we were looking at or um, talking about the other day. Can't remember self. What were the those solid um solid selenium state solid selenium. state selenium? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I know what sulfur. Geez, uh, <laughs> I'm tired from. Uh, I said sulfur. I'm tired from uh, last night's drinking event. Um, that you combine these things and it looks like you would have something, right? Because even mm -hmm. if at full power, you're you got a uh, phone that generates three watts, you know, at at a time but you're consuming five and you have the combination of a lithium ion or mm -hmm. solid state selenium in this, it's just charging it when you're at low usage and that kind of stuff. So I could see a combination of these things Ooh. working yeah. if people are willing to, to uh, deal with the radiation of this. And yeah. are there and, any costs? Go ahead. Sorry. Well, and that, that just, and that's if cell phones continue on the same path, like we just did something on the rabbit R one and we talked about the yep. human pin um, if they get smaller like that, who knows? Like this one small little cell could power those things, right? Um, because they have a small screen or no screen and very little interface. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we could do here. We are talking about uh, the glasses, the AR, VR. We're yeah. talking about a lot of these things that the problem, even the auto focusing glasses, the problem, a lot of these things is battery life. And you know, as battery life, something like this actually looks very promising because it solves a bunch of issues. Like, um, we, we're not just throwing batteries out all the time. So environmentally and recyclable, it's better. Um, we're not using as much, ideally, of uh, rare earth minerals because so, you know, there's a lot of. But again, we don't know what mass consumption of this looks like or what we think we can get the costs down to. Yeah. Um, but this, remember we were talking about wireless energy Yeah, uh, for, for recharging? That would eliminate the need for that. So one less signal that we would need, but we're trading it off with some radioactive isotopes. <laughs> well. Yeah, I think, um, I think we're going to end up with both. Yeah. So, yeah. And... Uh, Again, I think some of these things will be, especially when they get started, if we're looking at one watt in 2025, you know, we're, you know, that's 11 months away, potentially, you know, it's not yeah. far. So people could easily be thinking about, okay, how do I put this in my products? If I was a cell phone manufacturer, I wouldn't want to be the first with this because, yeah, um, you don't want to be that person unless they've done a lot of safety uh, testing because yeah. sure. you're putting the phone right beside your head right well There's, uh, if if we take in if we take apple's adoption into consideration apple probably wouldn't put this into their phones for the next 50 years <laughs> they're so slow to to adopt new technology right so well that is absolutely funny apple is you know used to be one of the people forcing the market ahead yeah and now they're dragging their butt on everything like they don't have touch screens in their laptops they yeah. don't have uh, foldable screens. There's a lot of things they don't have, and they're really starting to come behind. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, their touch screens on their iPads and stuff are great. Yeah. And But I think we all figured there'd be a little bit – they'd be a little bit closer from a touch screen interactive by now. 
Yeah. Well, even like even the software, like they're they're just implementing features now that Android has had for over 10 years for for some of them. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I used to say um, these phone companies leapfrog each other like every six yeah. months, one will come up. But now I think Apple's just way behind. Yeah, Apple's just Apple's way behind. And the thing is, though, is I get it. They are they are releasing phones that just work. Like that's all it is. Like it, you can it works and battery life is good. Um, but if you want additional customization features and things like that, and and they finally like with iOS, I think sixteen or fifteen, they introduced some widgets, which Android had since I think one of the first two uh, iterations of Android. But um, it's just it's nuts. Yeah, you say you know it just works. You know that's that's kind of debatable, but it's. Sure way behind and it's over overpriced now so people really need to start taking a look like i love your foldable flip phone um with yeah i love it Dutch the battery life is stuff. crap but yeah but that you know those you got the first one of that model right and it's amazing looking if people haven't seen it the the foldable color <laughs> touch screen is amazing yeah um and he got that uh thing on the outside the screen on the outside to tell you the stuff going on but yeah, that's way better technology than what this has been for how long, right? Yeah. And there are so many technologies we should be jumping forward in the ecosystem, but they are the laggards. They're falling behind. I they they closed a couple stores recently, and that's usually a sign for me that that's you know yeah. it's it's not not what I wouldn't say the beginning of the end. Apple's not going anywhere. No. But their market cap's going to drop a bit because they really need a shake up to figure out what's going on. And I don't think their uh, VR glasses are going to be uh, the next big thing. No, but I think they did just overtake Samsung as the world's top smartphone seller, which great for them. Uh, just people, are, people absolutely. Are, the thing is, is, is Apple's done a great job of once you're in your once you're part of the ecosystem that's it like you're in and and so um, they lock you in yeah yeah they lock you in which is why they probably don't innovate so much is because they have you locked in and and you're kind of forced to keep upgrading to apple and 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 getting the new devices and things like that especially when they start slowing down your phone because your phone is getting old like craziness yeah, obviously they got sued for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, they need to definitely step up their game. Not only did, did they overtake Samsung as the number one phone seller, but Microsoft overtake them as the highest market cap. So they're losing market cap at the same yeah. time as, yeah. and, you know, going into the streaming world, they got to be losing money hand over fist, profitability on different levels. Their profit margins are lower than ever now. So it's interesting to see where their next big thing comes from because yeah. the iPhone and the app store and iTunes is dwindling now, not increasing. I think. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. There's one product of theirs that I absolutely love, even though it doesn't have a touch screen. It's the MacBook pro. I've, I even have one that's 12 years old that I can still use on a daily basis with no problems at all. So their Mac OS and, and their, their design is, is good, but not a fan of anything else. Really. It's, it's just mundane. And again, I'm not hacking Apple. I'm in the Apple yeah. ecosystem. I'm I'm on a Mac, M1 Mac Mini now, talking to you, and I've got a MacBook Air as my daily driver. Yeah. Um, and I've been using Macs for years. I used to be a Windows uh, only person, and I, you know, yeah. thought Mac people were losers or whatever. <laughs> and then, whatever it is in that Windows Mac environment, and then I tried it, and it was amazing. And I tried it for different reasons because I was doing development at the time, and. Yeah. didn't look back so it's just one of those things you you either like it or you don't yeah uh, but yeah you get locked in the ecosystem because i have the apps that map on my ipad on my phone and on my mac and if you go switch to windows or something else you're like okay well i need apps that integrate with all these things anyway back to nuclear <laughs> batteries because we're way off <laughs> way off topic but hey that's great yeah uh, because that's the other thing we're talking about laptops uh, I want to see nuclear battery in my laptops. I want to yes. not have to plug in every, you know, be worried about, especially with my MacBook Air. It's great, but I've got an old one. I'm going to upgrade this this year. Um, 
but you, I start doing any sort of audio editing or any sort of thing that you choose up the CPU and the battery drops so fast. Yeah. So you got to be near a charger if you're doing heavy work with it. The, something like this would really change change things. So if the future plan is to get uh, one watt in 2012, when are we going to see commercial viability? Yeah, um, I would say there's uh, a whole bunch of hurdles before they get to commercial viability. There's there's certifications and testing that are going to be required. A lot of testing, a lot of different certifications. Um, there, there, there's there's so much that the, so many hoops that they're going to have to jump through. Um, even if they get a viable commercial product that is like working, um, I. Honestly, I would say if, if they can demonstrate it and, and pass everything, I'd say five, 10 years. Yeah, because, that's not far away. No, no, because like if if they can produce a cell that size that produces one watt, you put five of those together that you get your five watts max, which is what a cell phone drains max. That's probably about the size of, of a cell phone battery currently. Um so yeah i i don't see it but the, again it as long as they can overcome those those certifications and, and testing hurdles that that are going to be quite extensive much more extensive than any other battery technology right yeah and you know i see like i think you mentioned it when we were talking before i see this being put into drones and other things that mm -hmm. are a little bit farther away from humans at first yeah um, although you might handle it or whatever the most you know it's flying or it's away it's not physically on you or your laptop sitting you know near your junk all day yeah. long seeping radiation <laughs> these things are good but that's why those things but yeah 2030 i'm i'm all in this yeah. looks like uh, yeah. a great leap forward uh to be moving and we'd love to start seeing these things go big when i say yeah. go big i'm talking about let's start replacing solar cells and 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 large batteries in homes to start dealing with the power grid problem when yeah. we have you know homes that can regenerate power maybe it can't handle its max load but you got batteries you got this you got that and you can all you're always recharging you've yeah. got a different kind of grid and world at that point for sure yeah we we our power grid is so old and it's so fragile we we need some sort of solution soon yeah and everybody loves those evs and you know they take so much power more like more than all your other home stuff combined which is great but what does that do to the grid and we've talked about that before and yeah. you know we need some solutions for these things we do yeah th th this definitely cannot g go into evs because uh what happens if you crash <laughs> and that seal uh breaks so unless they they get something there but yeah yeah, that's why I'm thinking in the home where you yeah. charge your EVs, right? So if it's generating power and you can do a slow charge or it's charging batteries in the home, always keeping it charged so you're not drawing from the grid as much, you've got a different kind of solution. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah, now you're living with a radioactive. Now hey. we're getting close to backyard nukes. Exactly, yeah. It's uh, we're, we're getting to there. <laughs> this was a concept gonna... what, back in the 50s, 40s? Yeah, absolutely. 50s. 